study aims to bring a tinier tyrannosaur back from oblivion. New research is trying to remake the case that fossils known as Nanotyrannus were their own species, rather than a teenage Tyrannosaurus rex. It is only 23 inches long, but one Tyrannosaur skull has been a bone of serious contention among paleontologists for decades. In 1988, a team of researchers named it Nanotyrannus lancensis, suggesting that it represented a distinct animal that lived in the shadow of Tyrannosaurus rex. In 1999, another group argued that the skull and similar specimens were T. rex as a teenager, before the species underwent an extraordinary growth spurt that preceded adulthood. For years, the teen T. rex hypothesis gained traction. Most people bought into it, including me, said Nick Longrich, a paleontologist with the University of Bath in England. But drive, Longrich has changed his tune. In a study published Wednesday in the journal Fossil Studies, he and colleagues argue that enough evidence exists to resurrect Nanotyrannus as its own species among the larger Tyrannosaur family. Based on anatomical features, they argue, it isn't even particularly closely related to T. rex. Other experts say the study is unlikely to end the debate. It's sort of like Schrodinger's dinosaur, said Thomas Holtz a paleontologist at the University of Maryland who was not involved with the paper. This paper's going to keep people talking about it, but it's not going to really resolve it. To make its case, drive. Longrich's team studied the original 23-inch skull and more recent finds named Jane and Petty, as well as a long-disputed tyrannosaur specimen, the dueling dinosaurs. All of these have been argued to represent adolescent T. rex, drive. Longrich said, but his team said it found around 150 differences in their anatomy, including skull details, an extended, bladder-like snout, and longer arms and claws than adult T. rex. He also said the specimens had features consistent with mature animals, not adolescents. The growth rings inside the bone from three specimens, including Jane and Petty, likewise suggest slowing growth rates. The animals were on track to weigh over a ton, rather than the T-Rex, which was four to five tons, the researchers estimated. We have three individuals, which basically rules out an individual variation or aberrant growth pattern, drive. Longrich said, what we're seeing is that the growth patterns are inconsistent with these animals being juveniles. Where? Then, are the actual juvenile T. rex. Dr. Longrich believes he's found a fragment of one, a piece of skull from the University of California, Berkeley, collections described in the paper. In every single feature it was T. rex, he said. Other paleontologists are not ready to throw out the teenage T. rex hypothesis, and they raised strong objections to the paper. The specimens in question do show features in common with adult T. rex, among them the forehead, snout and brain case, said Thomas Carr, a paleontologist at Carthage College who first made the case that Nanotyrannus represented young T. rex. Moreover, he disagrees with the claim that they don't fit the growth pattern in other Tyrannosaur skulls. With T. rex and Tyrannosaurs in general, Differences between juveniles and adults are quite extreme and people are easily thrown, drive. Carr said, Holly Woodward, a paleontologist at Oklahoma State University who produced some of the growth data used by Dr. Longrich's team, also disputed their conclusions. The spacing of the innermost growth rings in the bone tissue of nearly full-grown adult T. rex suggest lower growth rates at younger ages before the big growth spurt she said. Dr. Woodward added that the team's choice of mathematical models risks producing a distorted picture that shows younger animals that are done growing, even if that isn't the case. I'm just not convinced that the growth curve arguments support that hypothesis, she said. Dr. Longrich responded that teenage T-Rex proponents haven't proven their case either. I'd throw it back in their camp and say, where is the evidence for your hypothesis? He explained that, for Nanotyrannus to turn into T. rex, this requires an extraordinary number of transformations. 
No other dinosaur develops like this. Drive. Longrich argues. Everything his team studied fits neatly into the Nanotyrannus form or the T-Rex one. Credible paleontologists have historically argued both sides of the issue, Drive. Holtz said. Part of the issue is that most T-Rex specimens are adults, with only a few sub-adults. Everyone acknowledges that gap. They simply disagree about its meaning. The discovery of either an older adult Nanotyrannus or a young T-Rex distinct from the Nanotyrannus form would help clarify things, Drive. Holtz said. So could forthcoming data about Jane and the dueling dinosaurs, Tyrannosaur. While the team's paper provides interesting suggestions, Drive. Holtz said it isn't enough for him to reject the hypothesis that these are juvenile T.Rex. The argument continues. For an animal that may or may not have existed, Nanotyrannus is proving curiously difficult to kill. The outsized influence of Teen T. Rex and other young dinosaurs. A deep dive into dinosaur data suggests that teenage T-Rexes and other juvenile carnivores shape their ecosystems. Adolescence is a time of great change for most of us. But it was particularly volatile for young T-Rexes. Before they became fearsome, bone-crushing adults, they had to pass through a number of stages. Two-foot hatchling, gangly preteen, bulky young adult. At each phase, they hunted different prey and filled different niches. As a new study in science reveals, juvenile T-Rexes and the youth of other large carnivores called megatheropods transformed their communities as they fumbled through their own physical changes. Their rapid shifts in size and roles shaped their ecosystems, the study suggests, and could help to explain some of the perplexing mysteries of dinosaurdom from the relative lack of species diversity to the strange preponderance of huge body sizes. Considering dinosaurs ruled the planet for 179 million years, there were fewer distinct species than you might expect. While today's world is positively fuzzy with mammals, at the moment, nearly 7,000 different types, we only know of about 1,500 non-avian dinosaur species, said Kat Schroeder, a Ph.D. student at the University of New Mexico and a co-author of the new paper. There are also, some very weird things about their mass distribution, Ms. Schroeder said. Within contemporary animal classes, small-bodied species tend to vastly outnumber big ones. For instance, there are currently 20 species of elephant shrew, and just 3 species of elephant. But for dinosaurs, it's the opposite. Most of them are large, she said. Some paleontologists looking into these dynamics over the years have tentatively blamed the youth. Juvenile T-Rexes were light and agile before they leveled up into the adults were more familiar with. The physical discrepancies between younger and older T-Rexes can be so vast that experts have argued over whether certain specimens are different species altogether, rather than different ages. Other megatheropods, including abelosaurs and tarbosaurs, also grew from turkey-like hatchlings to bus-sized behemoths over the course of their lives. For this reason, the presence of just one of these species in an ecosystem meant that a large number of different sized predators existed, there, hunting progressively larger prey as they themselves grew up, said Dr. Marcus Kloss head of research at the Clinic for Zoo Animals in Zurich, who has published theoretical work on this concept but was not involved in the new study. Perhaps the ecological real estate that might have been filled by mid-sized dinosaur species was instead taken up by these inbetweeners. To test this hypothesis, Ms. Schroeder and her co-authors examined 43 different dinosaur communities. By cross-referencing scientific papers with a public paleobiology database, they deduced which species were likely to have coexisted in space and time. They then sorted the species in each community by size. In communities with megatheropods, Ms. Schroeder and colleagues found what they call a carnivore gap, a large swath of medium-sized niches that were empty. For instance, the Hell Creek Formation, a well-studied fossil area that stretches from modern-day Utah to Alberta, 
was once home to 630-pound grown-up dromaeosaurs, 7-ton adult T. rexes, and no mature meat-eaters in between. Though the gap in Hell Creek is particularly extreme, most of the communities with megatheropods the researchers studied had no carnivores between 220 and 660 pounds. For a modern comparison, this is as if the adult carnivores in South Africa's Kruger National Park were all either larger than a lion or smaller than a bat-eared fox, they write. The carnivore gaps were more pronounced in these individual communities than in those that lacked megatheropods, supporting the idea that the young megatheropods were filling them, Ms. Schroeder said. The gaps also didn't apply to herbivores. This suggests that the juvenile carnivores' inability to hunt the same food as adults forced them to carve out their own niche, which had a strong influence on the ecosystem, she said. A baby sauropod, in contrast, could munch on the bottom branches of a tree while an adult ate the top. The new study represents an enormous feat in testing this concept, Drive. Kloss said, theoretically, he said, these same dynamics might have made it harder for dinosaurs to repopulate large niches after a mass extinction event. When the big dinosaurs died, the relative lack of small and medium-sized species meant that mammals were better positioned to take over. Broad analyses like this one air, truly transforming the field, of paleontology, said Lawrence M. Whitmer, a professor of anatomy and paleontology at Ohio University who was not involved in the study. The notion that youngsters were different kinds of predators than their monster parents was out there, drive. Whitmer said, but while many paleontologists had been focusing on one species at a time in addressing this question, this new study instead connects, thousands of dots, he said to show, how whole communities of dinosaurs evolved. It's a big deal, he said. At the same time, the paucity of juvenile dinosaur fossils makes it difficult to precisely understand the roles those youths played, said David Hone, a zoologist at Queen Mary University of London who has used similar methods to study dinosaur size distribution. Knowing that juveniles filled a general niche space and actually being able to do anything with that information are two different things, he said. Ms. Schroeder predicts big data techniques, already common in studies of ancient plants, mammals and invertebrates, will become increasingly popular with dinosaur researchers as they seek further insight into species interactions and growth patterns in prehistoric life. Young dinos were a big part of this. If you were transported to the Cretaceous, it would be fairly rare to see a big adult Tyrannosaurus, she said. But juveniles would be, all over the place, growing, changing and leaving their mark.